There are those who believe that books here began out there, all across Hollywood, with stacks of screenplays who may have been the forefathers of the photo novel, or the tie-in, or the novelization. Some believe there may yet be novels of films who even now fight to be found somewhere beyond the charity shops. <clears throat> well... Welcome back. Sorry about that. Welcome back to the channel and back to the cutting mat. Today you may have guessed that I'm covering Battlestar Galactica. This novelization covers the pilot episode of the Star Saga of a Star World, which was split into three parts for the series, um, with some changes that I'll discuss later. This copy was published by Futura in 1978 in the United Kingdom, and by Berkeley Books in the United States. Both feature cover artwork rather than theatrical posters of the film. So here is the book with what I think has a great um, striking image on the front of the uh, cover. A picture of a, uh, of a viper pursued by a Cylon raider. On the back we have an early concept picture of the uh, Cylon base stars, which are more like uh, spinning tops rather than the final double dish design that we see in the series. In the centre we have some uh, great colour stills, which I like to see, and some of them you may notice feature Ralph McQuarrie's concept art, rather than any sort of final shots from the film using the miniatures. And here is a little picture of General McQuarrie, when he uh, made a cameo appearance in Empire Strikes Back. The use of artwork was common back then, when the special effects shots were still in post-production, or not even sometimes filmed especially if the book was to get a fairly early release or to be on time for the film. Now I've come across this book several times out in the wild in the UK second-hand bookstores and every one of them bar one that I've seen has some sort of remainder mark at the foot of the book indicating that this perhaps did not sell as well as hoped by the UK publisher. Whether this was due to poor reception at the time or perhaps Futura printed too many is anyone's guess but it did sell very well in the United States, with something like 14 other novelizations of the TV episodes also published. You'll also note that writer and producer Glenn Larson is also credited on the cover, along with Robert Thurston. But he had no input in the writing of the novelization itself. Just like with Star Wars and Close Encounters, it was, all, it was very popular for marketing ploy of the 70s to use directors or producers, who are often a bigger name than the novelization writer themselves. Thurston also wrote novelizations for several other Galactica episodes, as well as the 1989's Robot Jocks and Ridley Scott's 1492. So, spoilers ahead people, if you have not seen this excellent TV series then what the heck are you doing here? I recommend that you go back and watch the 1978 film first, or the TV series, and then return. So the book has more in common with the theatrical release of the pilot episode, Editors of the Film, rather than the actual pilot series episode itself, which did have some glaring differences to both versions which were aired, such as in the way in the book Baltar is led away and executed, though not seen as such. Um, as it's merely a centurion that informs Imperius leader, rather than carrying out the decapitation in the throne room, as it happens in the film. The other notable difference is the uh, inclusion of expanded excerpts from Adama's journal. One for each chapter, in fact. These took the form of Commander Adama's podcast diary that we see in the series, given more rounded character to him but it also gives more of a detailed background to the universe of Battlestar Galactica in this book. Which is a nice little touch, in my opinion. We also get the uh, Cylon Imperious Leader's point of view, which I greatly enjoyed. You get a definite sense of the alien aspect to them, and how they sort of view the human race, 
Uh, did I say alien? Yes, yes I did, because in this early novelised version, the Cylons are not in fact robots, but in fact organic aliens with some reliance on cybernetics. The Cylon Centurions retain the red eye within the visor of their helmets, whereby no one has studied a Cylon enough in the Battlestar Galactica universe to know if this is part of their masks or part of the creature inside. But it appears Thurston had no access or knowledge of the final design for the Cylon Centurions, as they're not really described much in any way, aside from that red eye inside their visor. Final rewrites of the script incorporated the idea that the uh, reptilian Cylon race died, leaving behind an army of robots carrying out their final mission, to destroy mankind. This was to, to get around the TV rules so that they could show more Cylons being shot and destroyed, rather than living creatures, which would be deemed too violent. But the alien idea works quite well within this book. It is also alleged that the Canadian version of the Star World still mentions them being aliens rather than robots in their, in their version of the book. I don't know if there's any Canadian viewers out there, but they are welcome to leave a comment below if this is the case. I personally much preferred this idea than that of the reboot idea of the uh, re rebellious human creation that the Cylons ended up being, which to me echoed too much of the Terminator franchise and was an easy way of writing out Larson's Mormon biblical connotations to the series. As with most novelizations, again we are treated with multiple point of views of characters. And as I mentioned earlier, most interesting is the point of view of the Imperious leader, who is also described as having many eyes and a sort of virtual reality helmet or visor, which he uses to coordinate his empire, instead of the sort of goat lizard of the pilot episode. The leader is explained as having sort of three brains, whilst the lower ranks only have two, and drone soldiers having one. Successful Cylons are then promoted by way of having an extra, given an extra brain, with the uh, imperious leader eventually bestowing his third brain onto a worthy successor. Sounds cheesy, but it works quite well within the book. Other little details in the book also include that the uh, Galactus starfighters are also called starhounds rather than vipers that we see in the, or hear in the series. Also mentioned is that the pilots wear haptic flight suits which convey messages to them through their through the clothing. There are many other minor details such as Athena is described as being blonde and Cassiopeia as being a brunette and with Starbuck and Boomer's nicknames. Also, Sire Yuri is also um, mentioned as being quite handsome, rather than the old fella that we see in the film. Cassiopeia's role as a uh, socialator is better explained in the book. In the pilot episode, we are led to believe that they're like some sort of professional sex worker. But in the book, they appear more like Japanese geisha, whereby they train for years on um, social behaviours and human knowledge to entertain others with music and conversation much in the way a geisha are mis often misunderstood today. So too with socialators in the, uh, in the book. It is in this book that we also find out the name of the, uh, the singers on Carillon who have got uh, four eyes and two mouths. During the final scene of the uh, book and in the film, the robot drone, Muffy 2, is uh, shot by an Ovian warrior and shuts down during the escape from Carillon and is then later fixed by Dr. Wilker. Starbuck and Cassiopeia also, at the end, managed to, fire, managed to pilot a freighter filled with Tylium from Carillon back to the Galactica during their escape. The ending also differs with Apollo and Starbuck not launching a two-man attack on Carillon against the base star, but instead the Cylon base star is not destroyed and Imperious Leader lives, but he is, at the end, distressed to be experienced very human-like feelings of revenge and other emotions against humans. The Ovions are also covered with greater detail to their culture, a point of view of one of their Ovion soldiers and of their relationship to their queen is also mentioned. They also mention that there are a lot more alien races present at Carillon with also monkey-like waiters serving food and drink, which is their drug to make the visitors more docile. Robert Thurston is on record for mentioning that readers are often disappointed with novelizations as they can deviate from the film. It leads me to wonder if he got some flack for the major differences in this book. However, I for one enjoyed reading this book, 
It may deviate from canon in places, but it's all still a very good read. So again, if you fancy revisiting this classic TV series, I thoroughly recommend that you try the book instead. It is, it is still cheap and appears in charity shops quite often and used bookstores regularly in the UK. So that's it for now. Just a little final shout out to a YouTube channel I came across called Battlestar Collectica. Worth looking out for if you're a fan of all things Battlestar Galactica. I'll leave a little link below. Thank you all for watching, and goodbye!